Well, I've certainly never felt more like a rock star than this. Um, so 12 minutes, that's not very long. Oh, 12 minutes and 15 seconds, thank you. All right, so um, I'm quite pleased that this talk was delayed until the end of the session, not only because Mark Wexler's excellent film will appear afterwards, but also because this is a great way to complement the talk that happened at the very beginning of the day, Tony Atala's talk. Tony, of course, spoke about regenerative medicine, and I'm going to talk about regenerative medicine too, but I'm going to talk about it in a rather different way. However, Tony and I have a great deal in common in our science. In fact, Sense Foundation, the organization <coughs> that has been founded around my work, um, is actually supporting two major research projects at Tony's Research Institute. So, I'm going to give you five reasons why indefinite youth is now medically foreseeable. That means why you can look forward to the possibility that we will be able to keep you in a state just like a young adult, both mentally and physically, for as long as you live. I'm going to give you five reasons why that's true. Here's the first one. It's a really important problem, which means that people are working on it. And as people become more and more cognizant that it's going to be possible to succeed, it's going to be worked on more and more. We've already made some progress in that respect, and we're making more all the time. But I thought I would still tell you just how big a problem it is. 150,000 people, see that, die every day. But two-thirds of them die of aging. Twice as many people die of aging as all other causes of death added together. And in a country like Mexico, it's probably 80% going up all the time. In many industrialized countries, it's over 90%. Some people say, well, yeah, okay, so it kills a lot of people, but still, should we do something about it? I wouldn't want to be old all that time, they'll say. They'll think that defeating aging with medicine involves keeping people alive in the same state of health that old people are in today. But no, I'm going to explain to you now that that's not what it's about. It's about keeping people in a young state of health, just like someone in their 20s or 30s. Other people will say, well, even if I'm young, I wouldn't want to live a long time. I wouldn't want to live a really long time. Again, this is the wrong way of looking at it. It's like saying, what time do you want to go to the toilet next Sunday? You know, I mean, you obviously don't have an opinion about that because you know you're going to have better information on the topic nearer the time. Right. It's the same with having an opinion about how long you want to live. People come up with sociological concerns based on the increasing number of people that we might have. But we know nothing about that. We are so far away from having any big increase in the number of people as a result of defeating aging that so many other things are going to change. We just don't know. People will even say, well, they don't want it because it won't be in time for them, as if they didn't care about their kids. I mean, come on. It's all about health. This is all about keeping people in a healthy, youthful state. And there will be dramatic longevity side effects of this, probably. But they will be side effects. And any doubts that you may have about the desirability of all of this comes down to do you want to get Alzheimer's disease? What is aging anyway? Aging is a side effect of being alive in the first place. The normal operation of the human body, metabolism, creates various types of molecular and cellular alteration to the body, which eventually build up to a point that the body cannot tolerate. And that's when the diseases of old age begin. But here's reason number two why it's foreseeable we haven't been going about it the right way. So the fact that we have so far had very little medical success in postponing aging does not mean that we never will. Essentially, everything we do today revolves around what I'm here calling the geriatrics approach, treating the diseases of old age just like measles or any other infectious disease, trying to eliminate it from the body. 
That's obviously not going to work because aging is an intrinsic side effect of normal being alive. There's another approach which I'm calling the gerontology approach, and that says, well, let's try to clean up the way the body works so that we create damage more slowly than normal. But that's a really misguided idea too. Here's why. The body's really complicated. This is a simplified diagram of what we know about the body. And the amount that we don't know is even bigger. So that's never going to work anytime soon. But luckily, and here's reason number three why we can expect to do well against aging soon, we have a third approach. I'm going to call it the maintenance approach. And here is where I start to talk about what Tony talked about this morning. This is about repairing the damage of old age before it starts to cause diseases. It avoids the problem of the geriatrics approach because here we are attacking something which does not have accumulating causes. So the problem is not getting intrinsically harder all the time. But also it sidesteps our ignorance about how the body works because we are fixing this damage that's happening as a side effect, but which is not harmful until it builds up too much. Now, the best news is that we are quite close to actually implementing this. First of all, we can describe what this damage is, these molecular and cellular changes in the body, in a very concise way. There are only seven major types of damage that we need to fix. Here they are. Things like loss of cells, that, that, that just means cells dying and not being automatically replaced by the division of other cells. I have not got time in 12 minutes to go down this list and talk about them anymore, but you can see it's a manageable length. This is a good list and it really is very likely to be correct because it's been the same list for nearly 30 years now. Furthermore, we can describe how to fix it. This is reason number four to be confident. We can describe in quite a lot of detail how to fix these things. I have listed on the left-hand side here the same list as on the previous slide. And on the right-hand side, we have the ways to go about fixing them. These are not just words. There, are, there is so much that we know about how to do this that in the book I wrote about five years ago, Ending Aging, which has actually just been translated into Spanish, and you will be able to buy that in a couple of months, uh, we, can describe, we can put a whole chapter of information about how to fix each of these seven things. One chapter for each of the seven. So that's pretty good news. Now, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the details of this so that you believe that this is real science. This is a microscope photograph of the beginning of atherosclerosis. And it is the accumulation of molecular garbage in the cells in our arteries as a result of some toxic molecules which are created by the body and they poison these cells. We have found a way to fix that problem. We found bacteria which can destroy this substance. This is what happens if you give that, that substance to bacteria. Most of them cannot destroy it, but some of them can. Next, we have been able, after a lot of time, four years it took us, to modify the genes that those bacteria use for that purpose to put them into human cells in culture and we have shown, as it is in this graph, that we can protect human cells from this toxic molecule. We believe that soon we will be able to put this enzyme into, human, into the human body. First of all, into, mo into mouse models so that we will be able not only to prevent, but also to cure cardiovascular disease, which I'm sure you know is the major cause of death in the Western world. Now for number five. I have told you that we have these therapies we are developing. I think we have a good chance, maybe a 50-50 chance, of developing them completely within the next 25 years or so. And I believe that when we do, we will be able to take people who are already 60 years old and make them younger again so that they will not be biologically 60 again until they are 90. 30 years of time we will give those people. And that is a long time in technology. That's 30 years in which... 
30 years in which we will be able to improve those therapies and make them even better so that we can take this 90-year-old person who is biologically 60 and rejuvenate them again so that they are biologically 30 and they won't be biologically 60 for the third time until they are 150 or something. I have given a name to this phenomenon. I call it longevity escape velocity. And I am pretty sure that we will always be able to maintain longevity escape velocity to improve the comprehensiveness of these therapies rapidly enough over time so that once we can give people 30 years of extra life, we can give them 300 or 3,000 years of extra life. And remember, every single one of those years will be healthy and youthful. You will be biologically in your 20s and 30s, enjoying life the way you do now, enriching each other's lives, not spending your time looking after your elderly, sick parents or grandparents. What this means in terms of longevity is what I've said here. We don't know how soon this is going to come along. I have said we have a 50, for 50 chance of doing it within the next 25 years, but we have at least a 10% chance of not doing it for 100 years. That's OK. A 50-50 chance is quite enough to be worth fighting for. However, once we do it, we will have done the hard part. And people living much, much longer will be only a little bit younger. That's in the long term, though. We won't have any 1,000-year-old people for at least 900 years, whatever happens. And it doesn't make much sense to think very hard about how things are going to be in 900 years, because there are too many unknowns. But here is what you need to think about. You all probably know people who have Alzheimer's or cancer. And you probably, don't, you probably wish they didn't. Well, I wish they didn't, too. And I want to stop that from happening as soon as possible. I know that people will then be able to expect to live a lot longer. And I think that's a very good thing. But what matters most is people's health. That's what it's all about. This is the book I mentioned earlier. It is available already in English. It will be available in Spanish in only a couple of months. And I'm happy that you were able to come and listen to what I had to say. Thank you. Ábrelo. Ábrelo.